Hood riding through the glen. Robin Hood riding through the glen. And he comes, and he looks, and he bows his head. <laughs> Scene two. Robin Hood goes to the castle. And at yonder castle, he has to talk to somebody. I say there, is anybody home? I say, Maid Marion, are you there? Well, I do declare, this is an empty tree house, and I think it'll be mine. Uh, what is it? The sky's fallen down. Ah, uh, the sky's back up again. Well, I checked the place out, and looks pretty good, folks. <laughs> oh, I fell on my nose. <laughs> well, I think this here house will be mine. See you all. Okay. Well, as I go a walking through the bush. I see little old John lying down there over the sky. I take out my trusty sword and wake up little John. He just rubs his eyes and says, Oh, oh. Oh, it's you, Robin Hood. What's the story, son? And I says to little John, I have found a good old tree house, little John. Let's go, man. And little John him say, Oh, yeah, man, let's go. And so I take my sword, and I put my sword down. We shake hands on the deal, and we say, Right, oh, let's all go over to that little old house up on the tree. Um, at this point, we run out of words, so we just stand and look at each other, real serious-like. Um, end of the scene. Thanks. Bye. It's dark and we're all asleep, can't you tell? But next morning, we just have a little bit of a sword practice here outside our new tree house because this new tree house is going to be the scenes of many a battle. And we just have to get a little bit of practice and make us uh, get ready for this, uh, this here scene, like, you know? Once we've had our practice, we just kind of sit and talk and uh, that's the end of that scene too. <laughs> but then at the end of the next scene, well, we just come to the bottom of this house and we just have to check it out, man. So I uh, go around the corner and little John goes around the corner too. And after we've gone around the corner, we go around another corner. And then we come around the other corner and up inside. Oh, it's dark in here. And there are spider webs and mosquitoes and cockroaches. But no worries. Well, here we all are in our new little old house, and as you can see, it's starting to get night time, and night time's a time for dreaming. And it could even be morning yet, because the sun is almost rising. And I think I'll go to that there tournament tent, because that there tournament tent, I would like to torment that tournament tent. And uh, how is the best way that I can do that? Let me see. Uh-huh. <laughs> and there is the moon coming up. It is still night time as I go a sneaking a through the trees. There I go. See me? That's me. Hi, Mom. Look at it. What a ripper. Now, this here old guard who's got a bit of a headache on the ground down there, I'll just have to take off his uh, clothes. No peeking now, girls. Just turn your heads, please. 
and I'll just do a bit of a quick change here. Now you just get off to the exit stage left even. And uh, where's this hair helmet? Oh, it fits like a real beauty too. Now, those old clothes here, we don't need those. Get rid of those, thank you. And here's me old uh, guard, stand guard of this tournament tent. That worked real well. Watch out, here comes a hoss. Wait for it. Don't say anything. Shh. <coughs> Um, try again. Uh, take that. Why, you good old horse, you just stand on right on there and I'll just ride you off. See you later, folks. And then we come back to where, hey, little John, did you see what I got? No, where, where, where? Can you see it? No. Well, can you see it now? Look at all these horses going past here. Man. Okay, let's get this loot. Looks like we're rich, little John. Can you see it now? No. Someone turned the lights out again. Right, let's join the castle. Who's going to put some food on my plate? Hick. I'm hungry. Hick. I think someone's coming to see what we're having for breakfast. He's got a funny hat on too. I think it's green with a feather in it. Some poor chook lost his feather. Never mind. What else is for breakfast? I want some breakfast. Oh, don't break your plate, you silly old fellow. Oh, I say, what's going on here? Hick. Well, that is the silliest old party I ever did see. They had so much drink, I just pushed over their table and someone turned the lights out again. Well, you should have seen them at that breakfast table, little Joan. It was a real... Shh. What's going on here? Hey, I think the king's horses are coming to build a tournament tent. Hey, shh. What, what, what's happening? Hey, I think this is a good place to build our tournament tent. Okay, everyone get your pieces off now and put them on the table over there. That's it. That's it. Oh, what up, beauty? I think the king would be very pleased with this here tournament tent. All right, on your marks. And we will start for our duty now. Oh. Oh. Hey. Uh. Uh. Oh, I say, I fell off the roof, old chap. Well, there's me. See me? Hi, Mum. Riding through the glen again with me old friend, little John. And uh, we're just going to go into our little secret hideout and talk about all the things we've been able to do and all the money we've been able to get from these here rich people to give to the poor people and we just sit down and have a bit of a conference at our table and I says to little John, hello little John and little John says to me, hi Robin Hood and uh, we just put the roof down there to make it look all more secret like and uh, and we just keep on talking like this for a while and, and uh, shh, here comes some soldiers was a close one that didn't even see us. This is a good old hideaway, isn't it, little John? It's a real beauty. Well, let's go swimming. If it's swimming, something I like doing is That got rid of those turkeys. Okay, here we all are again. 
And it looks like old Nebuchadnezzar's in dreamland. Can't you hear him? <coughs> I think we'll just come in here and have a look at that there money box over there. What do you reckon, little John? Yeah, sounds good to me. Well, uh, now, how are we going to deal with this here box? Because uh, she's look, looking real big like, like uh, little John. And, and how do we... It looks like a, look as big as his dog kennel. Um, are you sure it's a dog kennel? Uh, while the lights were just checked, uh, turned off there, I just checked it out, uh, little Joan, and this here, can't you hear it, man? Can't you hear that money rattling? Well, we're all finished now, folks, so I guess we'll just bid you all farewell, like, uh, and here come the honourable horses bound, they are hayeds. Exit stage left and right, even. And here we is all are too. That's me. Can you see me over there? And that's me old mate, little Joan. He ain't so little sometimes because he eats his wheat picks every morning. And we just bow as they... Oi! Don't bow that way. If you look, you might see me white socks. And uh, here come the soldiers of the king. Bow, bow your head, man. Thank you. Don't stand there. Go on, get it. Get off. Get out. Go on. Shoo. Scram. <coughs> Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the land. Uh, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with these merry men. Well, here we all are again for our next exciting episode of Robin Hood and his Merry Men. And there we are at the top of the tree, shooting at that bullseye beneath the tree. Can you see us? There we all are, shooting at that bullseye at the bottom of the tree. Now, as we get our trusty arrows ready and... I say, old chap, did you have to bring your horses along just then? You tripped us up. Oh, I say, old chap... Oops! Oh, I fell on my nose. That's what you call a nose eye. Okay, right. Don't tell anybody, but I'm hiding behind this guy. See this guy? He's riding on this here gold cart and going into the inner recesses of the castle. Oh, what a beauty. We got him. And here I... Oh, it got me too. Hey, weren't supposed to do that. Just hang on a minute there. Oh, these things are getting out of control. Oh, dear. What What will she... What oh, What can we do? Oh, uh, look, he's, he's all getting away on us. Oh, I hope this thing ends soon. Ah, oh, there's the end. Oh, just in time. Scene three. Uh, scene three. Here we yours all are. We're at the joust. And there's the tawny man tent with all of the bystanders. And this fellow in white is just, is, uh, I don't know what he's doing exactly. I think he might be a comp here. I think he's the, the fellow that's just explaining all the rules. So he says, go. So we's a going. And there, can you see me? And the black knight just misses by a whisker. And, uh, nincompoops I think it said there and, and I got him oh he got me too and oh got the horse oh got the tree oh dear anyway the fellow at the tournament tent decides that he better get on the act too and all the crowd yells out and gives me a great old encouragement like and this old black knight's a bit, bit embarrassing for him really because no one's no one's shouting for him like you know so anyway we just uh, look at each other he gets his sword out now I wasn't expecting that but it was so heavy you tripped over on it. But anyway, we just carry on and see that his hat fell off, or was that his head falling off? I'm not quite sure exactly, but anyway, that was the end of all that. And whew, gets a bit messy, really. Um, the end. Um, the end. Uh, that's it, the end. And uh, that was the end of that scene. But thank
and can't play. Oh, cousin, that's terrible. What can we do? And Monaco said, Tell the king what I told you. Have an investigator lay a trap. Then he'll be ready when the villains come. And that's the answer. <laughs> I won't, cousin. I promise. And she did. And the king caught the bad guys red-handed and punished them. The king was very pleased. I'm so pleased that I'm going to have this whole adventure written down in my book of Chronicles. And he did. Meanwhile, the sinister Mr. Hyman was at work on a plot of his own. I've got a plot of my own. I'm going to sit down and point a second place only to the king. I'll make a law that everyone has to bow down to me. And he did. But Mordecai wouldn't bow. I refuse. I'm an Israelite. I don't bow to any man. My father's the most one God and God's laws forbid it. Rubbish, you better bow down to me. You'll find yourself in a lot of trouble. But Mordecai wouldn't bow. And finally, Haman decided to do something about it. I'm going to do something about this. I've got to get rid of that creep, Mordecai. Maybe I can have him arrested. But what for? Let me think. I am Ford and Ford. And slowly he came up with an idea. <laughs> I've got an idea. Mordecai's an Israelite. He worships the one God, not me, not even the king. If I can convince the king that Mordecai's part of conspiracy... So Haman, so Haman went to talk to the king and he said, Your Majesty, I have something very important to tell you. There's a group of people in your kingdom who don't obey your law. That's not unusual. <laughs> your Majesty, this is serious. You must get rid of them. Now, I'll even put money in your treasury to accomplish it. And he did. He went one step further. Haman got the king to sign a paper giving him power to destroy the captors. When the captors heard about this, they called a meeting to decide what to do.
Meanwhile, let's get back to Esther. For several days, she hadn't seen Mordecai. So she called the servant and asked, Have you seen Mordecai? I haven't seen him in the palace. Mordecai and the other captives were in mourning clothes and weren't allowed in the palace dressed like that. Oh! We'll get some proper clothes and take them to Mordecai and hurry.
what do you want, Esther? I just want you and him to have dinner with me again tomorrow night. I wish you would be serious, but the home cooked meal is hard to refuse. Who'll come? Won't we, honey? Oh, yes, indeed, yes. And home Think of it. Me and Bertley invited to dine with the king and queen. And he only wants two, not just once, but twice. I can't wait to tell my wife and all the neighbours. As soon as Haman got home, he gathered his wife and all the neighbours and told them the news.
That's a serious oversight. I must do something about that. Maybe I can do it right now. Are any of my ministers in the palace? Yes. Haman is. We'll get him. <laughs> I want your advice. If I wish to honour a man in my kingdom who had done me a great service, what do you think I should do for him? I'm assuming that the king man came forth. At last I'm going to get my reward. I mustn't be hasty. I must be careful. I'm, I don't want to be greedy. I'm rich enough, so I won't ask for money. I'll ask for glory. This is my chance to get what I deserve. Well, I was just thinking, if I wish to honour a man, I'll dress him in the king's royal robe and put him on the king's finest horse and let him ride through the streets and be proclaimed as a hero to everyone. And to heaven, the king is going. Good, excellent idea. Go and see that all these things are done for Mordecai, the Israelite. Oh, the... Well, I can't tell exactly what Haman said, but he did care at the king's order with a smile on his face and murder in his heart. <laughs> he was still grumbling as he stopped to the palace for dinner. This is the worst time of my life. I've never been so humiliated. I won't stand for this. I'm sick and command of this country. I'll use my powers. Tonight, I'll finish this business with Mordecai. <laughs> Meanwhile, inside the palace, Esther was busy with important business too. She hadn't forgotten about her promise to save her people. She prepared very carefully for the banquet. Destroyed. 
destroyed. What are you talking about? Who would dare threaten your life? Mm, the life of your people. What does that mean? Who are your people? The Israelites are my people and we're going to be destroyed. The man responsible for all this is right here. It's Haman. He hated Mordecai so much that he got you to sign that order, giving him power to destroy all the Israelites. Well, I'm an Israelite and Mordecai is my cousin. <laughs> the king was shocked. He was so angry that he left the room for a moment from doing something drastic to Haman. Haman realised that the king was going to realised that the king was going to punish him, and he made one last effort by pleading with her. Your Majesty, have mercy on me! The king will surely kill me if you don't stop him. Save me! Don't let him get me! Haman threw himself at Esther just as the king came into the back into the room and the king yelled Go on, go on, grab that man and don't let him get away <laughs> There was a scuffle in the room and Haman was finally pinned to the floor and the king said Haman, you'd better be glad I didn't get you myself You were going to kill innocent people to satisfy your own greed and jealousy If it hadn't been for Esther I would have been guilty of helping you I want to see that you're punished but I can't think of a punishment bad enough. Then one of the guards told the king about the gallows. Come and have a book for Mordecai. So, you provided, your, you provided your own punishment. You will be hanged on the gallows you prepared for Mordecai. And so we come to the end of our story. Haman, who planned everyone else's destruction, was destroyed. Mordecai then saved the king's life and remained true to the one God was rewarded. And the king, who almost made a bad mistake, was much wiser. Esther, who believed that God would answer her prayer and save her people, was honoured. And the choir, who had been part of it all, learned that everything works out right when you trust the Lord.
close our eyes for the opening prayer this morning. Pastor Rory, going to lead us in our prayer today. Right. Pray. Our gracious and eternal Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful morning that we can come together on the banks of this river to witness the work that the Holy Spirit has done in the lives of these young people. We thank you, dear Lord, for your goodness to us day by day. We thank you for your protection and care. We thank you for the children that you have given to us. Especially we pray that you will bless uh, these three young people as they have decided to give their lives, commit their, their whole lives into your hands. We pray that you will bless them. As I decide to follow you this morning, as I take the step of baptism, your power may go with them to guide them and strengthen them in a life's way. We pray that you will bless us in this small gathering here. In everything that will be said and done, and the instructions that will be given to these three young people may be for us all too, so that we may all know and love you and prepare for your coming. So be with us this morning in this small meeting that we have, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> very special day this morning and I think if uh, a lot of you can think back to your day of baptism it's a very memorable day that we think back to occasionally sometimes too occasionally but uh, today we've got a very special day and we're very happy to be able to share that together glad that you've come thank you so much too because last time we fell a lot here yeah? and it's a very fitting one for uh, you fellow can happy with the new product this time Instead of a big sermon this morning, I'd just like to br very briefly go through the baptismal vows. We've been studying most of this year together, and uh, we've had a weekly appointment. But as we go through the baptismal vows, I think I'd like to challenge each one of us, whether you've been baptised already, or whether you haven't been, and as well as the three that are being baptised, uh, these I'd like to be a challenge for each of us today. The first vow is this, I believe in God the Father, in his Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14 and verse 1, it tells us about belief in God and Christ. And it's interesting to see what it starts off with. What does that verse start off with? What then? Let not your heart be troubled. Plenty of things today would worry us. And you desire that change of heart too? Okay. I accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, recognizing him as my intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary, and claim his promise to strengthen me by his Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that it is the Holy Spirit that gives us the desire and the ability to obey and to follow. <coughs> but uh, this one, I accept the righteousness of Christ. What does that mean? We've talked about this in our little group discussions in our house. But I think the way that we got this point across was to say, how do I really get to heaven? In that day of judgment, what happens? Does God or do the angels take all of my good, all of my good points and, and put them on one side, and all of my bad points and put them on the other like a big scale? And if the good ones are good, then me lucky enough, suppose no more. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Can we ever do enough good to tip the balance in the favour of good? No. <coughs> That's impossible. Not even the most righteous holy person could have enough good things to tip the balance, to make the, the, the scales, oh, him, good man, no. It's only in the faith of Jesus. It's only as we accept what he has done for us and live the life that he has given us that we can have that ticket to go to heaven. Is that your belief too? 
I believe, number five, and to do all in my power to witness to his loving salvation and by life and word to help others to be ready for his appearing immersion. And I desire to be so baptized as a public expression of faith in Christ and his forgiveness of my sins. Yeah? The last one. I believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that people of every nation, race and language are invited and accepted into its fellowship. I desire to be a member in this local, local congregation of the World Church. Is that your desire? Well, you've heard the expression of faith of these young people and you've too been challenged by some of these vows and I trust that as you've thought about these this morning that it might give you something to take away from this service for yourself rather than just being a witness on in this, in this occasion today. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, Pastor. Well, I invite the uh, group who's going to sing this morning, Mr. Trindu and Mr. Singer to come and sing us and get the light.
to make sure that our young people stay true in the church. And I know that this young lady has already committed her life to Jesus. And because of that, Charlie, I'd like to baptize you now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. a young man with plenty of talent. We've seen it on a couple of occasions <coughs> as he's put on the war paint and the charcoal. And we know that uh, such budding talent is going to be used in a mighty way in the future. And it is good to remember the Creator in the days of youth and of childhood. And uh, as Jay dedicates his life to the Lord this morning, we can look forward to a full life ahead where he is dedicating himself to, to the work of the Master. Again, another ready listener and uh, a good learner. And I trust that uh, as he takes some of these principles to heart, that uh, he will have a really satisfying life ahead of him. And I know he will. Jay, because of your profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What can I say? When you live with someone, you know them really well. And I know the struggles that this young man has gone through in the last few months. Sometimes his parents have despaired and wondered whether, in fact, he would be ready. And because of the difficult challenges that he has faced personally and he's gone through some real struggles and uh, we've seen that but we know uh, with confidence this morning that he is doing the right thing and we're supporting him in that. I know that this young man too, I can't speak too much about his talent but I know that he has got lots and I get I'm, I'm very grateful this morning and, and uh, the heart of this father is very proud, very pleased, very satisfied this morning. But his firstborn son is now taking the most important step in his life at an early age. So again, his life is before him in service. And that I'm looking forward to too, to sharing with him. It was his big desire too to be baptised in the river, in the Solomon. Unfortunately, we couldn't bring the Piongo to Vidikama this morning, but uh, no matter. This river now, where there's been plenty of memories too. Nathan, it's a real thrill for me this morning to be able to baptise you because of your profession of faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. come back and get that one sometime when we took at the mango tree or the pawpaw or something and in the baptism as well as some people being ready there are others that are not quite ready yet I'd like to ask this morning Oswa you got himself a half ting ting too that's behind too you like baptized you like a new boy you come stand up with him three for a lot here and I can look at the look and decision below you the time we're waiting for people to decide that before this question I'd like for us to sing the second thing of that thing. Thank you. 